the great seal of the USA, as the words Anuit Coptis, which is understood to be Latin for approximately meaning he has made to flourish, he has made our enterprise to flourish, to be fruitful, he has helped us, he favors our undertaking, he favors our undertaking. And this great seal of the USA it has an all-seeing eye at the top, and this all-seeing eye is over a pyramid, a pyramid with steps, 13 steps against 13 tribes of Israel going down. And it is representative, it is an official symbol of, of the United States of America. But it reminds us of biblical passages, it actually could be understood to refer to biblical passages. First of all, the pyramid itself represents Egypt. It may be understood to be a pyramid of Egypt. And the Midrash, the Midrash, the Midrash by Midbar Abba, that is on the biblical book of Numbers. The sages gave a kind of commentary to different verses and in on the, in the book of Numbers, the Midrash on that book says it gives the um, the symbols that were on the banners of the twi tribes. Each tribe had its own banner, and Joseph on the banner of Joseph there was a symbol of a picture of Egypt, meaning we understand it to be a pyramid. It was a pyramid to remind you that Joseph became great. He became what he fulfilled his destiny in Egypt, and. There were two tribes, two tribes of Joseph. Joseph was divided into two tribes, Ephraim and Manasseh. And each tribe, according to the Midrash, on the, ba on the banner of each tribe, there was, first of all, when the, two tribes were, when the two tribes were together, they could be represented together by the picture of Joseph. Also, it is implied that each of the tribes had on their banner a picture of Egypt, that is a pyramid, and a picture of their own, of their, of their own individual tribe, that is Ephraim, was represented by a bull, or a bull calf, a bull, whereas Manasseh was represented by a unicorn. At all events, the pyramid represents Joseph. It's a picture of Egypt and it represents Joseph. Deuteronomy 33.17 refers to this. It refers to the firstborn bull of, to which glory is given or through whom glory comes. Referring to Joseph in Deuteronomy 33.17. So where the connection between the bull and Joseph In 33.17, Jeremiah refers to the eagle, refers to Ephraim as an eagle. An eagle in Biblical Hebrew could be pronounced as angle, and it gave rise to the angles. The conquered England, they gave England, Angle Land, his name. And uh, Ephraim expressed himself through the British people, whereas Manasseh, came more to his self-expression through America. Now this picture of Egypt on the Great Seal, it, it reminds us of a verse in the Bible, that Jacob, Mr. Jacob, the father of the 12 tribes of Israel, Jacob was also known as Israel, and he gave a blessing to Joseph. And he said, jo Joseph is a favored son reminding us of uh, what the, uh, the symbol said, annual Coptus, he has favored our enterprise. Joseph is a favorite son. With the eye of providence above him, that's what the Hebrew says, with the eye of providence above him, as seen on the great seal. The eye of providence above him. And the daughters, that is the nations, or the 
Other tribes marched with the bull. They went with him, according to him. That was the blessing of Jacob given to Joseph, and that the Great Seal reminds us of this blessing. The Great Seal meaning he has favoured our enterprise, he has favoured our going forward. The blessing in the Bible were to be fulfilled especially through the Lost Ten Tribes. The Lost Ten Tribes separated from separated from Judah, they separated from the Jewish people to do, fulfill their destiny in order to bring redemption to the world, in order to uplift humanity, to go down to the level of the Gentiles and to elevate themselves along with them, as explained in the book of Isaiah and uh, the commentaries to that work. Tribal names of people who settled in Britain and later in America are similar to those to Israelite clans amongst the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh. In Hebrew, in Hebrew the name Ephraim or Ephrathi, meaning someone from Ephraim, means the prince, means the principle of aristocracy, and Britain still holds by that principle. Whereas the name Manasseh, Manasseh in Hebrew, means the responsible representation, as explained by Rabbi Shimshon Raphael Hirsch. The responsible representation is the principle that the USA stands on, the principle of the American Constitution. We also find archaeological findings in the area of Menashe, actually throughout Israel, but especially in, in the area of Menashe, as uh, the archaeologist Adam Zertel showed in one of his publications, that these findings of ancient building ancient structures are to, similar to those known in the British Isles. Now prove a connection between the former inhabitants of that area and the British Isles. We also find a linguistic work by Rabbi Schlanger that showed Rabbi Schlanger analyzing expressions in the Bible that he showed that amongst the judges who ruled over Israel, those who came from Manasseh were referred to as the Sarim, the princes, and they were appointed for specific purpose, with specific powers. And that was the extent of their appointment. Whereas those rulers who came from Ephraim were more similar to the old idea of absolute monarchs, of kings. So even at that time, the presidential system was already, already pre-adumbrated foreshadowed amongst the tribe of Manasseh who were to come to dominate the USA when it became a nation. So it showed that people who came from Europe, people who came, often a good portion of the people who came to establish the USA as a separate nation, they came from areas of Britain, especially the west and the north of the British Isles, that is, uh, uh, England and Ireland, the western north, they come from the western north of those areas, and uh, they were dominant amongst the early immigrants. They all, also have people from other areas in which the Lost Ten Tribes were dominant, that is, uh, France, Belgium, the Netherlands, Scandinavia, Norway, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, and at an earlier stage, many from northern Germany and from other areas of Europe. We were shown through historical sociological studies that those who left Europe, especially Germany, but also other parts of Europe in the 1700s, were actually an ethnic, an ethnic exodus of people who had always remained somehow separate from those who lived amongst, and they had a, a nurture, an, an imperative drive told them to get up and get out and go to America. Whereas those who are not like them, who have different origins, of non like origins, stayed behind. That is the conclusions we have come to, and that is something which you could say is a spiritual explanation, but it also has some backing from sociological, historical, and sociological studies. That you have areas, two villages, one beside the other, who to the members of the villages that already always remain more or less separate from each other, 
one day all the members of one village just sort of get up and get out and go to America, whereas the members of the other village stay behind because they were different peoples and they had different destinies. And those who got up and went were from the lost ten tribes of Israel and they went to North America which became a center of the ten tribes of Israel. We also had Menashe ben Israel, Menashe ben Israel in the 1600s, 1604 to 1657. He was a Marano, that is a descendant of Jews in Spain who had been forced to become Christians, but they kept Judaism secret. And he moved to the Netherlands, where the atmosphere was more liberal, where Jews were tolerated, where he became a full-fledged Jew, and a scholar, a well-known scholar in, the, in the rabbinical studies, and also in general studies. He would correspond with the great scholars and the learned people of his time throughout Europe. And he also went to England and he persuaded the English or he led, initiated steps that led to the English accept, allowing the Jews to return to, in, to England. The Jews had been expelled from England in 1290 and only in the time of Manasseh were they allowed to return. Manasseh initiated the steps, he persuaded the people in power in England to study the subject. Cromwell set up, Oliver Cromwell was then ruling England. He set up committees and they came to the conclusion that legally there was no barrier to Jews returning. And it would be better if they just came back because there's nothing legal to stop them. And that would be better than, uh, perm uh, than issuing some type of permit, some type of legal legality allowing them to return because then that could then if it, then it, it could always be circumscribed people could always come along and try and put limitations on it or conditional clauses within it but let the law be as it is and they could return and they were allowed to return from that time on the Jews started to return to England and what is what is Manasseh ben Israel also known for Manasseh ben Israel became convinced, actually was misled. A fellow of Marano claimed to have gone to somewhere in South America and to heard the, the uh, Indians, the local Indians speaking Hebrew. And he took an oath that that had happened. And uh, so, and there were always already rumors of the Lost Ten Tribes were in those areas. So the Manasseh Man was certain that the Lost Ten Tribes were there, well, in the Americas. And he wrote a book about it. Apparently, Manasseh May seems to have also believed that the Lost Ten Tribes were in England and other areas. But one of the places they were in was in America. And he also believed that in his time it would be close to the end times and that the Lost Ten Tribes would return and therefore they would return from America and it would be the Murray Indians who would uh, become aware of their Hebrew ancestry who would return. So. And he wrote a book about it, quoting biblical passages and so on. So he was wrong. He was mistaken. He was misled, in part, because even though the Mara Indians were not from the Lost End tribes, and they were not returning in his time, the passages that he referred to, the biblical sources and also the Talmudic sources and so on, that he quoted in favor of it, were correct. And they said that the Lost Ten Tribes would return from that area in the end times. And so they will do so. They spoke of coming back by ship and by plane, by flight. Like doves to their root, doves to their coats, like doves to their nests, nests. They would return. And uh, in other words, they would return by air. So in the time of Manasseh, it was not possible for there was no air flight, but in that time there is. And it could be that we, instead of Manasseh are getting closer, are much, much closer than we think to the Messianic era, and the Lost Ten Tribes will return from there. So, that, so therefore we can use the proofs that Manasseh adduced and explained and apply it to our time. We also have the concept of the Messiah son of Joseph and the Messiah son of David. The Messiah son of da Joseph will lead the ten tribes who will become the, before the Messiah son of David. He will lead the ten tribes who will cause the ten tribes to be aroused, to return to where they came from. 
and also you will initiate a reconciliation between Judah and the ten tribes. You will also take steps to begin or perhaps complete the building of the temple and he will initiate the return of the ten tribes to the promised land. After him will come the Messiah son of David who will complete the process of enabling every Israelite to know to which tribe, what Israelite tribe they belong to, to be Judah becoming reconciled to the ten tribes, the ten tribes becoming reconciled to Judah, that is Ephraim and Joseph, that representing Joseph, reconnecting to Judah in the end times, and uh, that will be the beginning of our redemption. A great rabbi such as the Hatim Sofa in the 1800s, who was one of the greatest rabbis who have uh, been, and uh, they saw that Western Europe and the Atlantic Ocean area, area many uh, in part reaching up to the America, will become part of the land of Israel in the end times, in the time of the Messiah. So that implies that is where the lost end tribes will be. Thank you, may the Lord God of Israel bless you.